everyone, it's Doug from Beyond Territory and in this week's episode I'm going to show you how we develop the Metalift project to create a walled palisade and tower for your Dawnbringer Crusade. I'm going to build a fence, palisade and a watchtower. So getting started, it always helps if I visualise a little bit more about what I'm going to create. So go through the book, get some source materials and then I try and scale do it well, then I try and draw it out, get a bit of a, an idea of what I'm trying to achieve. So this is the basics for the uh, tower. It gives you some sense of scale. It's going to be about six inches main height with about an inch of a, a top roof. It's two inches square base uh, and the platform that the lookouts or sentries can stand on is about three and a half inches tall. So the fence is um, around the perimeter will be about three, three and a half inches tall. Okay, making the first part of the tower, I've got my two six inch rectangular dowel. What I've done is cut two inch little pieces and to speed this process up, I'm gonna use, oh, I'm gonna use some super glue. And at the two inch height, place one and the two. Okay. And then again, I do a second one. You can use hot glue, but I find it leaves it a bit chunky. You could use PVA. It takes quite a long time to dry, but it's still a strong bond. I'm just doing this with um, super glue at the moment, just to speed the process up for you guys, really. And then the last one, I'm gonna do right at the top. I then make a second part of the frame. Um, I've changed my mind, I've only gone up an inch from the bottom, so two frames they're going to be either end of the tower and then what i now need to do is cut the dowel to fit the gaps across the sides right so what i do next is add a bit more super glue in line with the next strut or support and that's going to be i basically it's the distance between the two frames oh make sure it's straight um and considering the extra bit of wood on the side. So I've done one at the top, bottom, Ooh, knock it, one in the middle, uh, add one in the top in a second. Now that I've done one side, I take my other part and I line it up, making sure everything is as straight as possible. So line up one end. One bottom and the top. The middle should sort itself out. And once that side is dry, I just repeat it on the final side. A note to everyone if you choose to use the super glue, obviously, there's <laughs> irritating risks when it comes to this glue. Alright, I think we've if we've done hobbying before, I imagine you've all come across sticking yourself to your work. So please be careful. Right, so it's dried. I've got the basic frame of the towel, towel made. So starting with the roof, I've got two inch pieces of dowel and I am joining them in the corner like so. And the same on the other bit. I'm now adding a cross beam in the top corner there. I'm going to join it at the other end as well. All right, once the frame's done, I stick a bit of cereal box card over the top of it with a little bit of an overlap on the sides to make a bit of a shelter tarpaulin. And that will sit on the top of the tower. Now for a bit of platform, something to stand the mini on. So, at the three and a half inch part, I have cut some coffee stir sticks. 
and I'm going to lay them as planks over the base, like this, one at a time. Just lifting the planks down. Quite quick. Hope you can see what I'm actually doing. So I also cut a little plank to sit in between the gap as well. And just put a little bit of down underneath to spoil it on top. So a little platform for my watchtower. Coming along. Alright, looking cool. Next bit. So placing a model, I use one of my Bing Victors to get a bit of a height for the bar. I'm just gonna set another piece of um, stuff, coffee stir sticks, it's like a little um, frame on the outside of the watchtower. Right, there you go, that's the basics of my tower. I'm not going to stick the roof on yet until I've uh, base coated and got the paints underway. Um, but that's the basic shape. It'll add a few more details onto it. So the next phase is adding a bit of fortification. What is this? this is a pop up fortification. So using my coffee stir sticks, I'm going to plank the outside three edges of my tower. So I just need to line it up at the bottom, find the height, and then start trimming. What I do now, a lot of my fabulous glue. Start planking. all the way around the edge. Like so. Right, well, there you go. The planking is around the edges, except for the back. I might place a ladder or something like that. But yeah, get in there. The lid on top, the roof on top. It's a nice piece of terrain first section of this build. All right, now that the tower's built, it's now for some wall defenses. Uh, I'm gonna make these modular as well, so I can rotate, place, play around with them in multiple situations, that's the idea. So starting off, I've got a coffee stir stick. I'm gonna make my wall about three inches tall. Okay, I've got my standard Vindicta, three inches, fairly good height comparison to a deed or do that. Once I've got my panel, I then trim off the top and I make it into a spiked area. So trim one side, rotate it, try and leave it up to a spiky top. Okay, this barricade's gonna be seven inches long. But what I'm gonna do is use one of the square dowels that is about six, six inches long. Get my, um, I place super glue on it that as a marker and the width of the ruler to mark out where the palisade begins. I line up my planks, my defensive wall, lining up at the bottom of the ruler. And I slowly build the wall. I wanted to have a little bit of a regular height, so I wasn't that bothered if I made a mistake with the cut in the heights. So I wanted it to look a bit natural. Just to strengthen it a little bit more, I then create another bead of super glue on my six inch dowel. And this time I line it along the bottom edge. And then a third piece, a third beam, towards the top edge. Again, super glue, tricky stuff. Make sure you don't get it on your skin. If you want to speed up the process even more, you could use an activator. Just to allow the fence to be a bit more freestanding, what I'm gonna do is use my little off cut of a wall. I'm gonna slice away the inside 
So I'm going to cut out the middle and it will be glued and slide in and sit at the bottom corner of the fence. Set it in. Set it level. Just going to leave that for a minute. Make sure it sticks. Now that the wall's freestanding, my extra bit of panel, so I'm going to continue it all the way along. Cut into the foam core, set them all the way down the fence. So I'm just going to take a Stanley, make an incision, and get the glue in that incision straight away. Slide the planks in, like so. So the fence has got its structure, uh, added on the extra planks to make it a complete eight inch, sorry, seven inch long fence. Add a bit of brick, adding the extra beams. I should have probably just got a six inch piece of dowel, but I didn't have it, so I had to do some extensions. With a little bit of uh, clever covering up in a bit when I start to paint it, I shouldn't be able to notice that gap and that difference. So next phase is Mod Podge and black acrylic and getting it all coated, seal it all, uh, strengthen the entire piece and um, give a good surface to paint on as well. So we'll bring it all together, tie it all together and make it a lot easier to add some colour into it. You could if you wanted to, if you're quite happy with the, um, the, the wood effect that's on here, you could just leave it I suppose. There's nothing wrong with that. It's totally up to you when you're making your palisade. Um, but I want to give it a bit more grit and a bit more colour to it um, to match what I'm hoping for. So slap your more podge on, get it coated, give it a good grounding. So yeah, Mod Podge dried and then I just gave it a nice brown coat. Uh, I can't remember the name of the brown paint, I think it's just like flat brown or something like that. Um, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with natural grey and I'm going to cover the rock. Get that. So whilst the grey is drying, I then do come like a mix of white and brown wash, well white and brown mix for the canvas of the roof. I'm now going to put a bit of Agrex Earthshade wash onto it, um, just to give a bit more depth to the wood. Um, I also come in with a bit of non oil or black wash the bricks. I also go a bit with the um, Agrax earth shade as well. I like a little bit of brown tinge to my stones. Just makes it a little bit more natural looking. Now that the washes are dry, I now come in with a brownie white dry brush. And what I want to do, first of all, picking up the edges of the rock. Then I also pick out the wood. I'm going to pick out some of the details in the wood again, make it pop again. And then for the tower, similar thing. Okay, so with a bit of dry brushing done, makes it pop out a little bit more. Kind of pleased with it. Um, now we've got a modular palisade, tower, that you can expand upon. You can make extra parts, uh, you can make them longer, make them shorter, and it all becomes interchangeable. Uh, the tower, obviously I could rotate it, have it any kind of which way I would like, joins together quite nicely. I hope you enjoyed that build. Um, I've learned a lot from it myself. Um, Super glue, although it's really quick and easy to use, You've got to be careful not to get your fingers stuck together. <laughs> so, uh, well, there you go. That's a, a fairly simple, quite a quick build to put together. Uh, you've got bits of scrap, bits of wood or 
coffee stir sticks or your, your bits of dough around, laying around, you can really kind of be quite creative with it. And this kind of thing could be used in a number of different formats other than just Age of Sigma. Uh, you could probably go to some quite historical gaming systems if you fancy it as well. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And I look forward to showing you what the next build in this project will be next week. Um, take care of yourselves and I'll catch you next week. Thanks for watching.